So we're here at Frankfurt with uh, Sean from Crytek. So please, Sean, um, introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, my name is Sean Tracy. I'm a senior field applications engineer for Crytek. Basically what that means, I like to explain that because it's a long title, uh, is that I work with the licensees basically um, um, customizing the engine to their needs because they're not all making first-person shooters. So. Okay, but of course Crysis 3 is a first-person shooter Yes. and you made some improvements from Crysis 2 to Crysis 3 for the CryEngine 3, so can you explain some improvements? Yeah, absolutely. So some of the big improvements we've made is obviously on the rendering side. We're always pushing the, uh, the boundaries when it comes to rendering as, uh, as far as hardware goes, as far as the consoles go. So some of the biggest improvements uh, are from the shader side. Um, we've implemented a new displacement uh, mapping technique. Uh, so basically you get these details out of things that you wouldn't get them before without using tessellation. So we call that pixel accurate displacement mapping or PADM. Uh, it's a very interesting technique. Um, artists can just use displacement maps uh, just like they would with tessellation except you don't have to use tessellation. So that's good. Uh, on top of that, we've done completely revamped the vegetation system. Um, just so that we could get massive amounts of simulation happening at once. Um, we're doing demos now that are showing people that we have 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 individual blades of grass and things being simulated by wind. Uh, on top of that is things like composite lens flares. So we have these flares that are happening off lights that are just uh, fantastic and purely artist driven. Um, so on top of that, there's new uh, real time reflections on water blended into cube maps. If we need them. We have area lights, a completely new lighting technique. Uh, and then on top of all of that, we have you know all these new volumetric shadows and uh, a lot of different rendering features going off. And I guess I could keep going and listing them and listing them, uh, but quite a few different rendering improvements. You didn't mention any lazy because in Crysis 2 there was only a kind of post MSAA. That's and now with Crysis 3 there's a bunch of anti-lazing methods. That's right. There's a lot of different anti-lazing methods that are that are capable, uh, or uh, the engine's capable of doing now. So some of them include uh, FSAA, uh, MSAA. Um, then we have post AA, which is uh, like a post process version of it. Uh, TXAA, FXAA. A lot of these um, are, are being combined into different methods, so you get the edge anti aliasing uh, plus the MSAA to give you better uh, to give you better anti aliasing in the end, um, because that's important to us, and especially on the platforms uh, where we're where the resolution is reduced a little bit. All right. So for the PC version, uh, DX11 card is the minimum requirement. That's so there's a lot of uh, DX11 effects or methods in uh, CryEngine 3 for Crysis 3. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, on the PC, uh, when you're in high or very high spec, um, most of the effects that you're seeing are designed strictly for DirectX 11. Um, so a lot of the effects like shadows in volumetric fog and things like this are so much faster now to be able to do in DirectX 11. There's actually a very good example of one of these sort of effects. Um, that we used not to be able to do so well on PC, uh, okay. but we could do very quickly on consoles. So one thing um, that the consoles can do better than the PC before DirectX 11 was along uh, was the was the communication between CPU and GPU. Okay, yeah. So what this means is we needed to call back some information. We could do it within one frame on the consoles, but when it comes to a PC in DirectX 9, it usually took about three to four frames. Uh, so one best example is occlusion, automatic occlusion. So basically we can we know what's in front of our player and if we can check the previous frame, we can make sure that all the objects that are not being seen are not being drawn. So th that's great, we could do this on console, but in DirectX 9 on PC, we would actually have to designer create occlusion meshes so that we could tell the PC where things are needing to be occluded. In DirectX 11, we've gotten now back to that one frame of, uh, of, of CPU, GPU communication um, and are able to do that, that same occlusion now in DirectX 11, so it's totally automated and no designer has to go in and Okay. Make little things so in the natural we have a better performance and better visuals. Absolutely, yeah, totally. Okay. So there's always a free SDK for the CryEngine. That's right. So can we expect all the new features, the DX11 features, mm -hmm. anti-lasing and all the stuff in the free SDK? Yes, absolutely. Um, there's nothing that we're not planning on shipping uh, in that free SDK. Now, it's going to be a little while um, because one thing that we do with the free SDK, of course, we're not going to release it right after Crisis launches okay. because uh, we have to integrate all the things. And we've done improvements in the free SDK that don't necessarily exist in the Crisis 3 build because there's more okay. people working on it. There's different types of genres being created and things like this. So we need to, we call it back integrating into that. Um, so we'll need to do that. And once all that stuff is solid, then absolutely we'll release, um, we're going to call it uh, SDK version 3.5 will, will be the biggest release we've done okay. um, since the free SDK has been released, really. Well, okay. um, but even before then, we've got new tech that, that's not even existing in some of our games that's coming out to the free SDK for the users to use. One of the great examples is even this week or uh, next week, very soon, uh, we're going to be releasing, um, uh, we call it our winter update. So basically it takes the sample level 
and completely winterizes it. So we've got an entity in there that actually is a radius-based entity, a lot like our rain, so that you set this entity, you set a radius, and then within this radius you get snowfall, thousands or millions of snowflakes. You get parallax occlusion snow, so that means that snow that looks like it's actually accumulated up, when you step in it, it actually leaves a decal behind and actually displaces that decal. Uh, everything's frozen in the environment. Um, basically, it's the crisis one frozen layer, yeah. but it's now fully deferred. So it's really, really fast is the idea. So yeah, there's cool stuff coming even before uh, the 3.5 update happens. So uh, it's definitely worth taking a look. Okay, so we know with Linux 11, the PC version is very, very amazing. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the consoles sure. and compare the consoles and to the PC. Mm -hmm. So what can we expect on consoles for render resolution, effects? Mm -hmm. Of course, there's no DX11, but the right. fast bandwidth between CPU and the GPU. Absolutely. So um, one of the big things with the Crisis 2 was obviously we got our performance really good on the consoles, and that was very, very important. So basically, with Crisis 3, it was, it was a matter of just pushing, pushing the boundaries on the consoles, and we've really pushed it to the... As far, and I believe our CEO said, we've only got not even 2% left on the consoles yeah, or something like this. I mean, we've really pushed it to the end. Um, there is no area within that game that hasn't been uh, performance optimized to make sure that it's, it's a similar experience to the PC. Uh, of course, some of the effects aren't there, some of the draw distances, so where you know objects are coming in or a little bit, are a little bit closer and things like this. Uh, but generally, you should get the similar experience. Um, uh, or, uh, well, you're definitely getting the same game. Um, you're just not seeing the exact same effects that you would see okay. on a PC. So. For example, you mentioned the parallax um, accurate occlusion mapping. Can we see this effect in the console version? Unfortunately, no. Um, okay. That one's not actually working uh, on, on the consoles. And the only reason for that is just a performance thing okay. uh, in the end. Um, and it's a GPU performance okay. issue, yeah. really. So we don't do that particular displacement method on consoles. But one thing that we do do, um, is that massive vegetation simulation mm -hmm. that I was talking about before that absolutely works for consoles So I mean okay. we tried to put the, the biggest features make sure those are working on on the consoles because we need parity Of course uh, if you buy the game on Xbox or you buy the game on PC You want to have the same experience as your friend had so. okay. and besides X11 and the parallax accurate occlusion mapping is mm -hmm. there any effect that is not being rendered on the um, I mean, well, uh, volume cloud shadows, that's a big one. Uh, I mean, okay. when you have uh, volumetric fog and you have shadows going yeah. through it, you won't see that on the console. Um, it's not really, I'm not even sure it's possible. Um, I mean, that's, that's, a big, that's a big statement right there. That's why I'm really, really shying away from it. Like, sure, I'm sure somebody could do it if they had okay. one level with only, you know. Um, but uh, beyond things that are really um, just these uh, uh, really extreme detailed touches, so... I mean, here's a good example of one, is that on our character's eyes, and most people won't notice this, is that there's dynamic adaption. Um, their pupils get bigger when it's in the dark, okay. or their pupils get smaller when it's, okay. in the, with it, when it's really light out. So I mean, those are some examples of some of the features that we like to put in PC, but we probably won't have that on console. Again, do, are people for sure gonna notice that? Maybe not. Maybe they'll you know feel it internally or something like that. You know, you'll notice it, but not consciously. Yeah. Um, you know, those are the kind of features that we put on PC and, you know, not on console. <laughs> okay. So I think that's enough awesome. for that moment. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. And until the next time. Thank you.